Hello everyone, welcome again. So we've been studying industrial chemistry and in particular we've been now looking at sodium hydroxide and how we produce it. So in the previous lesson we looked at electrolytic cells and so we needed to review that in order to understand sodium hydroxide. So now we're going to look at another sort of fundamental aspect of the sodium hydroxide process which is sodium chloride and electrolysis. So Sodium hydroxide actually comes from salty water, sodium chloride. So we need to understand how electrolysis and sodium chloride interact in order to understand sodium hydroxide production. Okay? So electrolysis in industry can be used to remove ions from aqueous solutions. Okay? That's how we can use it. Um, and it's, what, it's the work of Davy and uh, Lavoisier and various other chemists chemists over the years have learned how to do that um, using electrolysis. It can also be used to separate ions in a molten salt ionic compound. So sodium hydroxide is produced, in, is produced industrially by the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride. So as I mentioned, sodium hydroxide is actually made from sodium chloride solution. And in particular, we call this concentrated sodium chloride brine, B-R-I-N-E. So, electrolysis of molten NaCl. At the cathode, which is where reduction happens, Na plus gets electrons added to it, and you get the Na liquid, or the pure Na, which is um, pure sodium. At the, an at the anode, which is the oxidation section, the chloride ion releases electrons and it becomes chloride, chlorine gas, okay? which is just you know, chlorine gas that we're used to seeing. So the net reaction is Na plus plus 2Cl minus gives you chlorine gas and two sodium atoms. Okay? Now, the difference is that sodium, when we had the molten case, it was really easy to determine the, the products. We just, because there's only one thing in there. But now if we put the sodium chloride in water and try to electrolysize it, there will be different products. It can still happen, but there will be slightly different products because of the way the water interacts with the electricity. So in a dilute solution, so we're talking not concentrated, just a little bit of salt, the water will electrolysize before the NaCl does, producing bubbles of gas at each electrode. Okay? So if we have a dilute solution of sodium chloride, the water will actually elect electrolyze before the sodium chloride. So here's one set of reactions. The water plus two electrons, so this is reduction, forms hydrogen gas, and two OH minus. Okay. So that can happen at the cathode, and this one can happen at the anode. The water turns into hydronium plus oxygen gas and four electrons. Okay. So the net reaction is that you get two H2O plus two H2, uh, sorry, two H2O goes to form two hydrogen molecules plus an oxygen molecule. So at the cathode, the two possible reactions are the sodium reduces or the water reduces. So you can see here that the number here is much bigger than the number here. So what that means is it takes more energy for this reaction to occur than this one. Okay? Which means that hydrogen gas is more likely to, produce, to be produced at the cathode. At the anode, again, two possible equations can occur. The chlorine gas can oxidize, the chlorine ion can oxidize to form chlorine gas, or the water can reduce, oh sorry, oxidize to form oxygen gas. And again, because the number is smaller, the oxygen is more likely to produce to oxidize in this case than the chloride. Okay? So the number here is smaller. So this is bigger than this one. So we can see that the oxygen gas is, more, is a more favorable product because it takes less energy. Now, that was for dilute solutions. What if we concentrated the solution a little bit? What if we made a really, really salty solution? 
Well, in a concentrated solution, the chlorine ions will oxidize to form chlorine gas at the anode. So the chloride ions will turn into chlorine gas at the anode. Now, but on the other hand, hydrogen ions, hydrogen gas will still be formed by reduction at the cathode. So we can form chlorine gas at the anode, but we'll still get hydrogen gas at the cathode. So this is the net reaction. Water plus 2Cl minus gives you H2 gas plus Cl2 gas and 2OH minus. So the products of electrolysis, what do we actually, how do we determine these? Well, the solution left over once the hydrogen and chlorine has escaped consists of sodium ions, because the chlorine gas has escaped, and hydroxide ions, because the H2 has gone away as well. So that leaves you with essentially an NaOH solution. So whatever's left over is sodium hydroxide. Okay? So that's where we're heading. So now that you know how this happens, we can then, in the next lesson, look at what is the actual method to get this process to happen very favorably. Okay? So that wraps up today's lesson on the electrolysis of sodium chloride. So we looked at the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride, dilute sodium chloride solution, and concentrated sodium chloride solution. So, question six. If the salt auric chloride is electrolyzed, electrolyzed in molten form, what will form at the cathode? So auric chloride is just gold, two golds and six chlorides. If we electrolyze it, what will form at the cathode? Well, reduction will occur. So this thing will reduce. So we should form gold metal. So neither of those two things should happen because they're both oxidation processes. And electrolyzing a salt removes ions from salt solution. So it's one of these two. So it's gold metal because we're reducing this ion into the gold metal, which is zero oxidation number. Which of the following is the hardest to produce via the electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride? So which one is the hardest? It's probably not this one or this one. This happens pretty regularly. Chlorine gas happens pretty regularly as well. Having pure sodium metal produced at all is very difficult, so it's definitely going to be C. So this is the most, has the high, most oxidation potential, so it's most likely to occur. This has an oxidation potential very high as well, 1.2. And this one has an oxidation potential of 1.36. Uh, now this one has the, the biggest one, negative 2.17 biggest in magnitude that is. So this one will be the least favorable one to produce because it takes so much energy. And you can feel that based on how easy they are to form in real life. So sodium metals will rarely form pure sodium, whereas you can see hydrogen gas all the time, you can see oxygen gas all the time, and you can see chlorine gas all the time. So given the, the list of reduction potentials, what would form at the cathode of an electrolytic cell containing all of these metal ions in solution? So you have all of these in solution. So which one's likely to form, uh, form at the cathode? Okay, so we want to see reduction happen. So we will most likely see the one with the biggest number. So it's more likely to be A, the first one, silver because it has the highest reduction potential. You can see it's got the biggest number, biggest positive number. So it's the one that's most likely to form as a pure metal. Okay. When water is electrolyzed, what is the ratio of hydrogen gas to oxygen gas produced by moles? So what is the, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen gas? Two to one. So for every mole of H2O, you produce one mole of H2 and half a mole of O2. So it's always twice as many H2 moles compared to O2 moles. And by volume, well, it's the same. So by volume, because the volume of a gas is related to how many moles you have, then it has to be the same. Okay. And by mass, okay, now this is the, tr the tricky one. So it's about 1 to 8, or 4.04 to 32. So you can see hydrogen gas is very light. So it's about 2. 
Okay, so it's it's about two molar uh, kilograms per mole, whereas so and you produce twice as many, whereas oxygen gas is about thirty two. So you've got one mole of uh, two moles of oxygen of hydrogen to one mole of oxygen, so it's about one to eight per mass. Okay, by mass. So when molten sodium chloride is electrolyzed, what is the ratio of sodium metal to chlorine gas produced? So let's just write up the equation. NaCl to form Na solid plus Cl2, 2, 2, 2. Okay. So sodium metal to chlorine gas by moles, 2 to 1, 2 to 1, as you can see. And by mass, so we need to know the molar mass of this, and we get 2 times 23.99, which is the molar mass of sodium. And 2 times the molar mass of a single chlorine atom, and then you get 47.98 to about 70.9. So again, this is much heavier than this one. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on the electrolysis of sodium chloride. We've looked at sodium chloride electrolyzed as a molten salt, then as a dilute solution, and then as a concentrated solution. And we saw that in the concentrated case, we actually get sodium hydroxide at the end. And so that's where we're heading in our next lesson. So I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson. Thank you.